Hello Rat Bags, it's Jade. Welcome to an Art Survival Evolved Genesis Guide. I'm going to give you the lowdown on everything you need to know about the missions in the Arctic biome. I am using cheats, but I am going to adequately explain what you need, what type of loot, more importantly, you get from completing these missions, and how hard they are, and whether or not you're going to need your own creatures or your own items. I think that's definitely worthwhile doing at this point. I don't think there's much value in trying to do these missions legitimate at the moment, because so many of them are still unbalanced nearly impossible to do on alpha so once wildcard have implemented more changes and fixes and maybe boosted or changed the loot tables i will do my best to complete these legit but for the vast majority i'm going to talk about what you kind of need to get through them all and generally what the rewards are and whether or not it's worth it so please make sure you like the video and kicking off with the rhino 500 on gamma obviously the races are pretty much some of the easiest ones to do Gamma and Beta are pretty okay, you should just about be able to do them. Alpha is another story completely and you'll see that from these next two missions. But either way, this mission you're jumping on the Rhino so you won't need any items or any tames. There will be creatures running around though so you may want to make sure you've at least got some defense or attack weapons and armors. When you go through it all, it is pretty decent, you do manage to get through it pretty easily, it's not the hardest race. The loot table for it is... A collection of different saddles, including Bronto Platform Saddle, the Sarko Saddle, and Aranio Saddles. So you'll also get Tech Swords, which is probably one of the more useful things. This is going to be the same for all three difficulties. You're just going to get better quality items. You do obviously get some more random items, and if you don't know how the loot works, pretty much you're guaranteed three items for each single mission. So it'll be them three items at least. You'll get at least one of them items. And then the rest of the loot is pulled from general loot pools. It looks like Gamma is more or less fishing quality style loot, Expect it to go up to maybe journeyman and primitive, but that's about it. Then you've got obviously beta, which generally is like yellow and green drops. And then you've got alpha, which is normally like red or purple. Now, don't quote me on that completely, though. They will be reworking the loot tables from what I've seen on some of the comments on Reddit and elsewhere. Next up is the Saber Slalom. This has got to be one of the hardest ones to do on alpha. I challenge anyone to legitimately say they've completed this. It is nigh on impossible. I don't think anyone has. It's nigh on impossible because you either fall off the cliffs or you're going to just run into a bunch of UTs and other creatures that are going to hamper your progress. You just literally cannot cheat your way through this anymore either. On console, you were able to spam the jump button and it gave you a marginally speed increase. I don't think that's currently working now. I did this on the PC and it didn't seem to have too much of an effect. In fact, it probably slowed me down a little bit. But you can see I'm almost flying on my kitty using the speed boost there and still able to turn things around. This is one. One of the hardest races there are on alpha difficulty once you get into these caves this is where it can really go wrong if you're not paying attention you can easily get lost or it stops your motion if you fall off there so make sure you stay on the path at all times don't try and do any sort of shortcuts otherwise you will get disorientated and when you come out turn left it's not very clear but you have to turn left or you'll take a dive like i did Gamma and beta difficulties aren't too bad, but on alpha, you've got to do this in 2 minutes 40 seconds. I just think that's impossible. I tried it a bunch of different times, and nothing I could do was getting me close to it. On gamma difficulty, you're going to be getting things like single pistol and maybe some ghillie boots. On the beta, you'll have the addition of the desert cloth boots a lot more, and on alpha, you get a big mix of all three, with obviously much higher quality. Next up is ice fishing. This one, pretty simple, just simply fish. You need to get 10 fish to pass gamma. You need 13 for beta and 16 for alpha in a small time period. You obviously don't need to bring much other than stuff to keep you safe from any other creatures nearby and you don't need a fishing rod. It does supply you with one. All three difficulties, you're going to be getting stuff like a harpoon gun and yet again, bronto saddles. Why are we getting bronto saddles? for something like this it just is a bit odd like i said if this has changed by the time you've seen this video please let me know in the comment section how big or different the loot is right now next one is a collection mission searching for the fro zone it's pretty hard this one you're gonna to have to go through a lot of caves with a lot of polar bears as well as possibly some more feroxes so it's a good place to actually come to if you want to get some tameable really easy to get obviously just follow it through and you will come across your first gather point 
And so this one's a lot easier than the bog biome. They're all pretty much in the same sort of location or spot. You're not going to be running around too much. Obviously, there is meant to be a bunch of creatures in here. But for some reason, my game is massively glitched. And I've got nothing spawning on PC at the moment. So this big cave, it's really easy to get them all. Once you're done, you've got to come out and head over to the next location to hopefully find the next batch, which again is really easy. It's all underneath the ice. So as long as you've got a good bit of fortitude and some oxygen, you should be able to get these ones pretty simple. Next up, you're going to be going back to more or less one of the spawn points when you first come into the Arctic biome and you should find it. it's pretty close to one of the glitch points. You'll know it when you've ever spawned in here. 75.1, 30.2. I put this here just because it is a bit harder to get to sometimes, especially if you're doing this obviously in the order, coming up from the frozen ice lake it can be a bit difficult winding your way up so you are going to need something that can move at speed or i guess a bog spider is probably going to be your best bet sorry blood stalker they're definitely going to be one of the easiest ones to get around but remember there will be lots of creatures in and around between these points i have done this at night time because it's actually a lot easier to see them just like it is with the glitches always try and find the glitches at night time you'll definitely find them a lot quicker as well as lots of the hunt missions too now the last set is all the way round the other side of the mountain so again if you've got a bog spider no problem otherwise you're going to have a bit of a mission getting there I really don't think you'll even make it unless you've got something super speedy like a Gallimimus or maybe a high level raptor or I guess a Procopticon would work just as easy as well now again they're not that hard to find they're all more or less in a straight line underneath or hiding under trees there's another location for you 773 41 0 and like I said, this one's probably one of the easiest ones compared to some of the others in the other biomes. This search mission's pretty okay. For this, you're going to get Procopticon saddles, Plesiosaur saddles, and uh, goggles, scuba diving gear. So yeah, maybe that's useful for some. I really do wish they would give complete sets, like a complete set of ghillie or a complete set of scuba for each style mission. I think that would work a lot better than the current just random loot pools with maybe only three guaranteed items. On now onto one of the hardest ones you're going to do on the beta even, let alone alpha. I think this is nearly impossible unless you've got a full crew of up to 10 players. It is a case of escorting the little tiny baby Procopticon home to its mama. This should be achievable even if you're doing it on your own with something like a flamethrower I found was pretty good or something really high level melee and making sure you've got plenty of health and plenty of stamina. Along the way, expect to come across Dynodons, Wolves, obviously, and Sabres, but you'll also come across three or four points where there's going to be loads of Arctic Bears or Polar Bears, and they're not too much bother. In fact, if you're quick enough, you can actually catch them sleeping. Again, I don't know if this is a bug or a glitch, but they seem to be just waking up at certain points. So run on ahead if you want to a little bit and see if you can take them out before they actually wake up. The rest of the time, expect random attacks from kitties and wolves all over. Like I said, it's them three or four sets of the polar bears that are really maybe a bit more trouble. I went through at least four primitive flamethrowers that need to be repaired, as well obviously as a bunch of actual fuel for it. If you're going to be using something like a shotgun, well it should only take one or two shots for most of these creatures anyway on the gamma difficulty. It's the beta and alpha that you're going to need actual dinosaurs and creatures for if you want to succeed. And here's the little moment Skippy got rescued by his mama. Good day, mate. Oh, sorry, I tried to put you on me barbecue. You go ahead and take your little sprog now and hop off. Now this one's pretty good if you want a tech railgun. You're pretty much guaranteed to get one at nearly all difficulties, as well as flak legs and a titanosaur saddle. Again, of all the things you want to put in these missions, a titanosaur saddle? Really, wildcard? Come on now, fix up. Just to show you the extent of the difficulty, once you start putting it on beta or alpha, its health is ridiculously low. It's only going to take a couple munches from a few creatures and you're going to be in serious trouble. I tried using my UE and my little band of Carnos, and as you can see the health just goes down massively while you're getting distracted. I'm sure there's probably better creatures to bring maybe, but you definitely have to be on your guard and kind of stand in with the baby little kangaroo at all times. Just look how much health it's lost in one in interaction with a bunch of creatures and the frozen polar bears. My U is only around level 90 and the Carnos are all between sort of 50 and 100. So again, if you had high difficulty ones, I don't think it really matters. It's all about the speed that they can attack some of these other creatures. 
I think I only just about got to the halfway point before I failed the mission, even using the cheated in creatures. It just is really hard. So make sure you're doing this with a team of people at least. I would say five or six people possibly for beta, or you all have just a bunch of creatures if there's two or three of you. Otherwise, you are not going to do this solo. I really can't see it happening unless you've got some help or you have got about 30 different creatures that you can have in different sets to pretty much guard that kangaroo. Mound over matter is one of the hardest ones there is. It's a checkpoint one, so you're going to need creatures. You're going to need plenty of your own weapons and armor. I would suggest something powerful like UT. Again, with a bunch of Carnos, it might just about be okay. But you are going to need also a very speedy creature to make the final checkpoint at the end, as you have to do a run, basically, after finding and clearing out a bunch of the resources, which in this case is the golden nuggets that you have to dig up from some of the mounds when we get there. But kicking off at the beginning, go to the checkpoints. HLNA is obviously going to scan them and you just got to protect or stay there for a few moments and kill any creatures that come your way. For the most part, you know exactly where they're coming from, usually one direction or so, well ahead of you. So if you've got some long range weapons, they should be okay. Or as I said, if you've got a bunch of creatures, you can sick them on them. At Gamma, it's not too bad. They'll go down pretty easily. Like I said, I'm going with the tried and trusted flamethrower here, and that seemed to be doing okay. But later on, it does get a lot harder. Eventually, you will come to a big clear in that area where you've got to investigate these mounds. You can see I've switched my UE and my Carnos to kind of show you. I do like the UE because it will scare away a lot of the Dianodons and the walls and etc. So it's a pretty good one to use. This is where you need at least one bodyguard creature with you because you're going to have a bunch of Pelovias jump out of here as well as Microraptors too. And it's only going to take a couple to disorientate you and who knows, you may get killed by surrounding wildlife as well. So I would definitely suggest a UE in this instance. Clear out all the mounds and you'll eventually pick yourself up a golden nugget and then it's a race to the exit point with one of your speedy creatures. This is where you might want to actually take the time, put all your creatures in cryo and get a bog spider out and see if you can hot leg it all the way through or even a Procopticon, something that can just jump and glide past all the enemies. There is an absolute shed ton. UEs, the absolute lot. Ferrazino, usual creatures, rock golems, just tons and tons here. So you will not make it unless you've got something very speedy. As you can see, I'm trying to strundle along with my UE and I end up getting caught too. In fact, I did the honourable thing and I left it and I ran for the exit point and I just about made it to the finish line. But obviously there's quite a bit I've cut out there and you will get caught by a bunch of creatures unless you've got something quite speedy, as I said, or agile. If you've always wanted some riot gear, this is how you get it. Riot boots, or riot shield at least anyway, and trike saddles are the main order of the day. Although I did get a couple of blueprints for ocean platforms too. Depending on what platform you're playing it on, they may have nerfed the gauntlet by now. On PC, you can no longer cheat on the bog biome gauntlet where you could leave your creatures outside the circle and bring them in afterwards. That has been fixed. Console, I'm not too sure. Anywho, it looks like you're going to have to just do this one by foot. You don't need any items or weapons other than healing items and obviously making sure you've got the best armor possible. For this alone, if you're doing it on your own on like almost official settings, you're going to need the highest end gear possible. Pretty much the armor that's going to see you through. These creatures are pretty easy to kill, to be honest. It's usually one hit, but the beta and alpha difficulties, I can't see anyone doing this on their own unless they're boosting their own single private server or they're mucking around with some more of the settings. It's simply impossible. And that kind of is the idea. I'm talking as if that's a terrible thing, but remember, Ark is a multiplayer game. You're meant to do this between one and 10 players. So even with all 10 of you with top high-end gear, maybe some of you have got some of the tech gear already, you're still gonna struggle just the sheer amount of creatures. On the beta and alpha difficulties, it takes at least three to seven shots for each creature, or depending on what melee weapon you're using. I would still go melee. The axes are the ones here, or chainsaws are in fact even better. You'll find them on the outskirts here on the power-up side of things, and these are definitely gonna do the job, and you will eventually come across the Megapithecus. Obviously rock golems, feroxes, mammoths, and rhinos too. Like I said, maybe on Gamma, like if you've got a good, decent leveled character and plenty of armor, you should be able to make it through the built forward tough, but otherwise on the next difficulties up, you're gonna need at least 10 people. You will not be able to do this otherwise on your own. 
Considering I think it's one of the hardest ones to do, the rewards are really crap. Hazmat gloves, parasaur saddle, and maybe the only decent thing is some snipers. Like I've mentioned a few times now, you do get other bits of random loot, but they're the three main things that you will get through completing this mission. Rounding off with a bunch of hunt missions, and I reckon a Ferox is going to be your best bet for completing some of this. Although it's going to be needing to be a fairly decent level, I would say you're going to need at least three to 5,000 health on your Ferox, maybe more if you really want it to succeed, and definitely a lot of melee damage too. You will obviously need your own items and armor sets for this one too. We just got to simply hunt down the marks and find the Ferox. If you're trying to do this during the daytime, don't even bother. It's so hard to find the footprints in the snow in the daylight. It's just almost impossible. I spent way too long trying to do this. The best bet is to go into nighttime. Also, quick note, if you've missed any of the prints, maybe you went ahead and forgot to scan a couple, you'll find it hard triggering the last encounter with the Ferox. So make sure you've gone and found as many of the actual tracks as possible before you get to this point up here. It's kind of like a snowy plateau. You've got a downslope on the right, you've got a sheer drop on the left, and right in front of you, you've got a little pass to a cliff front. This is where you're meant to fight the Ferox at the end. I spent about 15 minutes trying to find another print, and as it turns out, it was because I'd missed so many on the way up. Eventually, because it got night time, I realised I should have been doing this at night time to see stuff much easier, and you can take on the Ferox, as well as a bunch of walls. It does pretty much dismount you though when you get attacked by the Ferox, so be very careful. You can see my one is a level 107, and its health was pretty low after this encounter. I'm using a decent shotgun, although it's pretty much just still primitive, and you can see you can take it out level 300. The walls shouldn't be too much of an issue after taking on the Ferox. Oh yeah, plus the kitty cats too. On Gamma, you're looking at a lot of fur chests and miners helmets. Again, another absolute useless item, especially in the daylight and the snow. And if you do the later difficulties, you'll probably get a lot more metal shields. As I said, each point going up them tracks, you come across the Ferox and each encounter reduced my level 3000 health Ferox down to barely five or 600 left. So like I said, you're probably gonna need something at least over 120 and making sure that the Ferox has got health of at least three to 5,000. Don't have to go too far from the next one. You can see there's another hunt mission here, Dearly Departed, and it's pretty much exactly the same thing. It's gonna lead you to exactly the same sort of plateau, and there you'll be able to fight off against three big megalosauruses. Lessons were learned. Look how much easier it is to do it at night time. You can clearly see the lights flowing up on the footprints, but you will need to be careful. And this is why you need a Ferox, because some of the paw prints look like they're actually on the side of cliff faces. So you're going to need something that can actually clamber up if you want to activate it. Make sure you don't miss any. They're normally in clumps of five or six, and HLNA seem to be a bit more responsive on this one. After two encounters or so with a brute Megalosaurus, you'll come across the herd and these need to be cleared out to complete the mission. It goes without saying, if you're doing this on the more difficult levels, you're gonna need even higher level Ferox or at least pumped full of health and melee or definitely gonna need some other creatures as backup. I did just about do it with my Ferox. You can see I'd lost more than half my health taking on these three. This is all about the saddles. You're gonna get Megalosaurus saddle, Capro saddle, and Megatherium saddles. Again, really hope they work on this loot a lot better. Closing out the last two missions, Mammoths on a parade and Ruffles and Feathers. Ruffles and Feathers needs a lot of explaining because it looks like some loot tables have been mixed up with some other missions. It's in fact, a really important mission, so it's kind of a cheese way to get some decent gear by doing Ruffles and Feathers. Anywho, let's clear the Mammoth on Parade one first before we finish off with this. We're on the hunt for some Mammoths. I used the Kitty Cat on this one and no, that is not the one. Not unless it's a super high powered one and you've got some friends along. You will get wrecked by the Mammoths when it comes to the final one. It is another hunt, so it should be easy again to do at night time. Just follow the paw prints and every few occasions you're going to come across some of them to actually fight. They're pretty high level and the health in them is about a thousand. So even on Gamma, this can be pretty difficult. So be warned, make sure you've got super, super kitty. As you can see, there's a collection of them here and they are absolutely beastly, let alone the Brute Mammoth, which has got a lot more going on. So yeah, don't bring a kitty to this one unless it's absolutely a beast. 
at least three to five shots with a fairly decent shotgun if you're doing this by hand. And like I said, I don't think you will be able to. Obviously, I've got GCM on mode, so it wasn't too hard, but I definitely know these guys would be taking out a lot more. The final one was taking at least 10 shotgun hits, and I did do a bit of damage with my cat before I actually jumped off and it got killed. So yeah, be warned, it's really difficult. Loot for that one, desert cloth helmet and a hazmat helmet in these harsh conditions. Yay. Also, you get some metal sickles too. So exactly the same mission point, you've got ruffle some feathers. Now ruffle some feathers, you're going to be hunting down the UTs. Again, I'm using a ferox for this. And again, you're going to need at least level 3000 terms of health and something over level 100 if you want to complete this. It's not too bad taking him on the first two encounters. You can heal up in between, make sure your ferox has got plenty of health. But as you can see, it's quick and easy to fall off it sometimes. And you might be in trouble if you don't manage to get back on or you take down the UT quick enough. Now I managed to actually cheese this a little bit. When you get to the final encounter, it's got a bunch of Carnos obviously as well and more UEs and the main one got stuck behind some rocks so I kind of lucked out a little bit. Otherwise I reckon I would have been brown bread. That's not to say there weren't no casualties as it did eventually kill my lovely Ferox. No! So yeah, you're going to need a group of at least 5 to 10 players if you're only bringing one creature, or you're going to need a big bunch of them to back you up, and like I said, a big Ferox, or maybe even a Yuti yourself and a bunch of Carnos might be the order of the day, or some T-Rexes. Now this is where it gets interesting, look at the loot that you get. You get Tech Claws, you also get the Mining Drill. This seems a bit OP for this level or creature. You can also get a chance to get Astra Cita Saddles, the Motor Platforms. You can also get Rocket Launcher, but generally that's only on the Gamma level. And you will get a Tech Sensor as well. I'm sure it'll probably be patched. I'm pretty sure the tech laws you probably weren't meant to get unless you complete it on beta or alpha. And I'm pretty sure all of this loot is meant to be the loot when you kill Moda on the ocean biome rather than this one. It seems like this loot just doesn't really match this creature. And when you actually take care of the Moda boss, you'll come to realize the loot from that is pretty crap as well. So it definitely looks like they swap this around. I'm sure this will be patched hopefully by the time you play it, but I did do this not that long ago, only a few days ago around the 9th or 10th of March. So yeah, great way to get some really good loot. Look at them tech claws, look at the level on it, it's crazy. So yeah, I do believe this is a mistake. I think this is meant to be mixed with Modar. And that is it, that is all of the snow biomes. There are no extra little missions to do, unlike on the bog biome where you can go and play hoop. You can simply find the glitches, complete it all, and you should be well on your way with both of them biomes completing all missions to being able to do the first gamma boss test. Hope this has been good. I, as I said, can't help it if they change loot table afterwards but I will do an updated video if they do so and they stick with the loot tables so look out for that one if it's the case otherwise please comment down below if you find any distinctly different loot in the sets just remember three major items in each mission and then you do get a random choice of some of the other stuff but it can be from all over the place but you are at least meant to get at least one of them three items or more for all things Art Survival Evolved, make sure you subscribe to go and check out the rest of my guides, tutorials, and my gameplay of Genesis, and I'll see you ratbags very soon. Bye-bye.